using it more. However, we, we've been planning on this as a team, managing these sites for when we're gonna start to ramp down and, and demobilize some of our assets. So there's no additional max vaccination sites on the on the table right now, but there will be uh, on the 5th of May, we will be closing this one here. Transitioning the staff to convention center and then using the extra resources to staff mini strike teams and task force components around the valley to do smaller locations like three to four or 500 people a day. Cashman's last day is uh, the 5th of May, and it's second doses only. Everything else, everybody that gets a first dose now is being scheduled for their second dose at Convention Center. So the question is, will the county uh, support and enforce a vaccine uh, business, businesses that choose to have a vaccine? So the private sector is well within their right uh, to do whatever they want uh, in order to help us with mitigation efforts. Um, I, I do support that in many instances. I said that uh, yesterday that um, you know EDC asked about coming and I said, Look, I'd like to see if you, if it were up to me, which it is not, um, people that have been vaccinated or negative PCR tests. That is consistent because my responsibility is to ensure that our community is safe and that we can keep the positivity rate down. No, not at all, because we tracked the first doses that we gave three and four weeks earlier. We knew that this week was going to be very large, because if you back up to when hospitality opened, that was three weeks ago. So we got a big influx of people from the hospitality and the restaurant and the food service industry. So we knew our second shots are going to be very high. So of those 7,700, 7,700 shots that we gave in this building on Tuesday, three quarters of those were second doses. So they were follow-ups. Does that make sense? So what I would say is we also rely on you, the media, to help us uh, get the message out uh, to make our community safer. Uh, so anytime that you can remind folks, I'm, I have two people that call through uh, District B every single day because some folks just still don't know how to get it. They don't know how to access it as much as we try to, as much as we all live it every single day, not everybody else does. So I rely on all of you in the media to help me uh, get the message out. There were some folks uh, in the beginning that may have just had COVID. They had to wait a time frame to get it. Uh, we're going to go back out into the neighborhoods as well to provide additional options for folks to come in and get their vaccine. But this is consistent with the lull that we've seen every single period that we opened a new, uh, a new level. Uh, going forward. So what I would tell you is it may be slow today, but it could be very busy tomorrow. It just really depends. We're a 24 seven town and people have different schedules. And so I don't want people to think that there are not folks getting vaccines because we're working hard every single day to remind people that our, we want to make our community as safe as possible. So once we identify those sites and schedule the dates, they'll be put up on the health district website and we'll push that out to the media. But we have done dozens and dozens of these since January. We've used Hollywood Rec Center, uh, Pearson Community Center, Winchester. We've used uh, county and city-based community centers all over to do 250 to 300 people a day with a smaller workforce and just be more spread out in the community. So that's our plan going forward. Once we condense these larger sites, we will saturate the areas that really need it 
uh, that you know had been maybe not come to get their shot, didn't want to get a shot, try to just make it a little bit easier for them to get to it. These megapods were to vaccinate the masses as fast as we could. You get the most bang for your buck when you put 150 people working a site. You can do seven to eight thousand, but to do uh, 300, you still need 12 or 15 at the at the least. And then when you you know just you get more efficiency in the larger pods to get as many done as possible, then break off and pick up the rest of the community with the partnerships of the pharmacies like CVS, Walgreens, Smiths, and so forth. I don't know if the daily numbers will be the same, but we will definitely reach people that have not been able to get here or did not want to come. Some people hate crowds. I mean, it's a bad town to live in if you hate crowds, but you know, if you don't like crowds, you know, this would be an opportunity to get to a spot that's a little slower uh, as far as the pace. Uh, just, to, just to follow up on the comment from the chief, uh, the, the main purpose of those uh, small uh, strike teams or vaccination sites is to strengthen our uh, collaboration with uh, community-based organizations, the, the faith community, and, and the purpose is actually to bring the jobs closer to the people so they, they will have that vaccine available closer in the neighborhood in an environment where they feel more comfortable? Okay, we'll take one more question and then we're gonna, I'm gonna head out and get my second dose. She wants a clarification on when the second doses are at this site. The end. The um, oh, I don't have that date in my head. It'll be three weeks. It'll be three weeks from. Well, we're we're going to continue to do first and second doses here. First, the second. If you got a first dose here today, you're going to be scheduled for your second dose at convention center. Second doses will stop here on May 5th. Does that make sense? Everything stops on May 5th. Yes. Yes. Because when we, we, we opened up to hospitality, we got run over. People wanted their shots. And three weeks from that day is when they're coming back for their second shot. So we were really heavy, heavy busy the first day or two with the hospitality group, and then it trickled down. And we see it with every tier. So same thing. We knew that the hospitality group was going to come back for their second shots. We knew it was going to be busy. We talked about at the end of last week, we could see that we had 6,600 second doses booked already for Tuesday. We knew it was going to be a big day here. Later in the week, yes, Saturday's going to be busy again, uh, not as busy as Tuesday, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday had smaller numbers. It does. We do still fill up some. Uh, we have partners that are out there trying to push the message to their employees and, and their uh, constituents to, to get people over here, but we knew, we, we planned for it. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, uh, first, uh, uh, all, all vaccines that have been uh, approved or, let's say, uh, received emergency authorization from the FDA have been sub submitted to a rigorous process. And uh, Johnson & Johnson is also part of that. Uh, we, we know that both Pfizer and, uh, and Moderna have been applied already to millions and millions of people in this country. And, and so far, we haven't experienced uh, those severe adverse events. Uh, again, uh, going back to Johnson & Johnson uh, serious adverse events, it, it's important to mention that we, uh, today we are talking uh, about uh, six cases out of almost seven million doses that have been administered from that vaccine. And when you look at most of the vaccines that are being offered in a regular basis through the immunization programs across the country, uh, that, that proportion is extremely low, but still it's, it's important because the, the FDA 
uh, consider that it's, it's a serious event and that's why they are doing their investigation. Thank you.